I'll be speaking on fellowship opportunities in arthroscopy. Now, most important thing we need to understand about a fellowship is it's not about seeing 100 surgeries or 200 surgeries. The most important thing you are going to learn in a fellowship is decision making. So, you need to know why I'm doing a bank card repair, why I'm doing a lethargy, why I'm doing a bone block procedure for the case. Because ultimately at the end of the day, your hands-on skills will develop over a period of time. It's not going to develop by doing 10 or 12 cases in a fellowship. You will need to develop it over a period of time. What you need to learn in a fellowship is why you're doing a particular case in a particular way. A fellowship is an opportunity where you can bond with your mentor surgeon. All of you in a fellowship share a common passion and that's what drives you in a fellowship. It's a very important part of your life. So make the most use of it, understand why you're doing. Second, when you do a fellowship, you will see your master surgeons also getting into complications. That's a very important thing because complications are in inevitably going to happen with you also. So how they get out of those complications, how they treat them is very important. Any surgeon who has operated anything will have complications. You need to understand how to address them. Third thing what you need to take from a fellowship is different uh, perspectives of the same thing. Now when you look at an ACL, somebody may be doing a bone patella tendon bone, somebody may be using a hamstrings graft, or like somebody may be using a latarje for a shoulder instability, somebody does a bone block. Why they do that particular thing in that particular way, that's very important. So this is one perspective you need to learn. It, you should not go there with an attitude that since I learned with a hamstrings graft how to do an ACL, that's the only correct way. You need to learn why that other person is doing with probably a bone patella tendon or whatever it is. Last thing is, you need to understand to accept your results. If your results are bad, then you need to look at yourself and improve on that. So when you work with these mentor surgeons, you will see them publishing papers. You need to be a part of their publications. You need to work actively to contribute there. And you will see an honest reporting of data. So it's important that a degree of honesty you imbibe from them. You accept your results. Okay, this is where I'm going bad and this is where I need to improve. That's, these are the most important things which you are going to learn from a fellowship. So don't look at the numbers of patients you are doing in operative cases that I saw 300 ACLs there. That is secondary. Most important are these aspects because inevitably as you keep on doing surgeries, your surgical skills will improve. You yourself will be doing 300 ACLs a year after a period of time. That's not very important. Decision making is. So how do you apply for this? There are multiple pathways to apply for uh, sports medicine and arthroscopy fellowships, USMLE is there, the Australian Orthopedic Academy is there, ISACOS and Asia Pacific Societies. Now these all offer you accredited fellowships. The USMLE, the issue with that was um, there are a lot of applicants as uh, Chastnel pointed out through the USMLE and then you have to go through the match. You have to pay, I mean for the exams and everything, you have to spend a lot of money and even at the end of that, you are not very sure whether you are going to get a fellowship or not. So with regards to that, Australia is far better. You need to have a good ILTS score. Their, their information is available on their website and there are over 70 centers where you can apply for various fellowships. ISACOS and APCAS, they will offer you traveling fellowships and they will give you good opportunities. But the most important thing about an accredited fellowship is it is a structured program. So in that, at the end of one month, you are supposed to be doing this. You are supposed to be um, writing these many number of papers. You are supposed to take the incision at this point of time. This is the time you will start a portal. This is the time where you will complete the surgery. It's a structured program. So these are always better compared to non-accredited fellowships. These are some of the non-accredited fellowships in Europe. And there's a long list of this. Now, the, I'm not going to go into much detail about this, but my point about this is See, when you apply for non-accredited fellowships or for that matter any fellowship, don't write on the mail that I am so and so from this part and I would like to apply for a fellowship. Nobody is going to read that. They are going to just throw it. You read the paper of the author, what he has published, what is his area of interest. You take that down, then you write to the author, address him by his name that uh, Dr. Hertel, I would like to work with you. I have read your papers on the proximal humerus. I would like to know more about that. So that's how you apply for a fellowship. Don't write a vague uh, copy-paste mail. Second thing, references. References are very important. It is preferable if you're applying for abroad fellowships that you have references from abroad. Or if 
they know somebody in India references from them. That will help you in a long extent. Accommodations outside when you are going through for a non-accredited fellowships, you will need to arrange the accommodation on your own and that will be the uh, most important part of your expense. So take care of that. The other important thing is the first fellowship is where you learn the most. So let's say you are uh, have, devising a career over a period of five to ten years. You do first long fellowship which must be minimum six months to a year's time. Then you start your practice. You will realize that there are certain doubts which you have, certain things which you want to improve on. That time you maybe do a two weeks or a one week fellowship because in the second fellowship you don't need to go through the basics to the advanced. You need few doubts which need to be cleared. Like that you keep on doing fellowships till you are satisfied. For shoulder surgery you may need to do maybe two to three fellowships with different surgeons. There are different procedures in shoulder surgery and if you want to do let's say a tendon transfer then you may want to work with somebody else. If you want to do an arthrolatarge you may want to work with somebody else. The other important thing is if possible try to work with innovator surgeons because they think in a different way. They are the people who are devising the techniques and everything. So every problem they look at in a different way. So when we, I'll just give you an example. I worked with an innovator surgeon, Herbert Resch, who has devised more than 30 procedures. He has done more than 30,000 surgeries in shoulder. So when we talk about early uh, glenohumeral arthritis, the newer procedure maybe he was devising was osteotomies of the scapula to correct that. So that's may not be very popular right now, but you look at a problem in a different way and that's very important for your practice, for you yourself to develop as an innovator probably and to devise new things. Publish papers, that's very important. So in my experience, I decided that I was going to do arthroscopy from a second post onwards and I was fortunate that I was in KEM and I had the benefit of working with um, great arthroscopy surgeons from Mumbai in KEM itself from second post onwards. I was in arthroscopy units. So I had decided that I want to be an arthroscopy surgeon. At the end of my final year, I decided that I would like to specialize in shoulder surgery. So after that, I gave my USMLE. Unfortunately, I passed in everything. I got the percentile due to the SF match. I could not uh, clear that. But then later on, I came to know that you can apply outside the match also. But then by that time, I had um, left that uh, USMLE pathway. So then I embarked on uh, German fellowships. German fellowships are very good. They are interested in teaching you. There's not much of a language barrier. If you ask honestly, they are pretty conversant in English and they are willing to teach you. The most important thing is you need to go and ask them relevant doubts and uh, relevant questions. And they will be more than happy to teach you. You get an opportunity to scrub up in each and all of the cases. That's not at all an issue. And if you have a good rapport with the surgeon, they also allow you to do some surgeries. But these are mainly, um, but if you ask me, they are mainly surgeries where you are only allowed to scrub in. Austrian fellowships are similar to German fellowships and probably working with Herbert Resch was one of the best fellowships I had. South Africa, I worked with uh, Dr. De Beer. And again, he was an innovator surgeon. So with Dr. De Beer, I worked only for one week. So it, uh, by that time, I was already practicing in shoulder surgery and the only thing I wanted to learn there was the arthrolatarge. So that's how you build it up. First German fellowship was about six months, then the Austrian fellowship was for about two months and then the South African one was about one week. So my aim was to, you know, learn specifics about one particular problem rather than to learn the whole shoulder gamut. Now, after that I had developed some amount of interest in hip arthroscopy, so I went for observership in hip arthroscopy. Now, giving you the example of writing a mail, how it's important is, so I went for my hip arthroscopy observership with Dr. Shane No. He does a lot of hip arthroscopy, so I wrote him a mail that I have read your papers on femoroestabular impingement and how you correct that and your results are very nice and I would like to learn more about it from you. Within two hours I got an acceptance mail from him directly. So, it's important you uh, approach the correct person, you read his papers and apply with that in mind that what you are applying for. Don't write vague mails for this. Alright, I would like to thank you. And